And so before I got on here, you told me that you got into your profession only a little bit over three years ago, right? Like 2019? Okay. Yes. What caused you to go into, into selling, you know, getting into selling solar? What, like, what was the career change there? Because you said you had like, you were in B2B before that. Yeah. I, I mean, I've always been a business owner. So I moved to Utah from California and kind of had a business there and had some income from it. But I had a friend that was in solar. Okay. And he worked at this company and got me in. So, so he said, um, hey, come over here, work for this company. You can sell solar. And tell me about your experience starting out. And then we're going to give some folks some knowledge bombs here of, you know, the, some different questions that you're using that we've taught you and how you're using them that they can apply for their industries as well. Okay. Because we have tons of training, 150 different industries and got tons of different industries probably watching you here right now. So, uh, so what happened? So walk us through. Um, I mean, I, I, I was always in sales kind of, you know, never officially in like a sales person, but sold for myself. So I was used to talking to people and I like people and everything. So it, I fit into it fairly well, but, um, I, I think it was just like the typical, like you're assuming the sell and you're, framing it where they're going to make a decision at the end yes or no yeah. and you're asking all these logical questions that are you know have to be a yes answer okay so, so that's how i was trained yeah so you so you got into that and you were trained just kind of like a normal salesperson would be trained just regular you know i would say old school techniques mm -hmm. and you said you got up to making you said you're averaging around seven grand a month or so selling that way yeah i mean it was up and down i think i was doing good to hit over 10 and then um you know i would have some months it was it was sad and then i would have i but i i wasn't the worst guy there and i wasn't the best guy i was like the middle guy you're just average so, just average okay. and which was decent yeah it, it also is the company too like i the commissions where i'm at now are really good and I've, i'm with awesome people I was an employee. Are, you, are, you, are your commissions a thousand times higher? Um, no, but okay. uh, it, it made, that made a difference too, for sure. It made a little bit of a difference. All right, good. Yeah. Jerry, when you were introduced to that concept, because it looks like you got into one of our starting programs, uh, NEPQ 2.0, when you started learning different techniques and questions that work with human behavior, what started to open up in your mind compared to before? It, it was a hard transfer for me in some ways because you're, you, when you're so grooved into doing things one way and assuming, it feels weird almost to ask questions. It's a foreign thing. But once I kind of learned it and, you know, kind of memorized it like an actor, you know, kind yeah. of, yeah. and it was natural, yeah. then it becomes natural. And then people are talking to you mostly and answering your questions and opening up. Yeah. So makes selling pretty easy at that point compared it's, to before. It's fun for the most part now versus before it's stressful. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. The, the reason why. So using what techniques? So those are called neuro emotional persuasion questions. So when we talk about NEPQ, that's what we mean. Neuro emotional persuasion questions. Now we have to teach you the right tonality. Okay. Cause you can't sound like a scripted robot, right? That tonality mm -hmm. that we teach you with the right questioning, put your prospects at ease, eliminate sales pressure. Have you seen that in your prospects since you started to use that? What are you, what are you noticing? How you're, how are, how are your prospects react to you in the beginning now compared to how they used to? Um, they're just more open and they are re more relaxed. Yeah. I, I think they don't feel uh, I use neutral language a lot, yeah. you know, maybe could possibly work for you. Yeah. You know, it's real, real um, yeah. low key and, and people are relaxed more. For yeah. Sure. And when they're not nervous, when they don't have anxiety and they relax, they become far more open to what you're offering. And it gets them to pull you in, which we're going to give you guys some techniques today uh, in solar and other industries. Doesn't matter what you sell to get your prospects to pull you in. So you got. OK, so first of all, you're making five, six, seven grand a month. You're you're kind of right in the middle of the pack in your company. OK. Uh, you're making a little bit more of what the average person does in your industry. What caused you to be like, you know, I want to learn more advanced skills and I want to sell more. Like what got in your mind that triggered you to go out there looking for better training? 
I just ran into your Facebook group basically, and it clicked with me. Like this makes sense to me. It, and it sounds easier than trying to <laughs> try to assume and make you know try to get people to do stuff like that. And you got in the Facebook group, and you're like, "Hey, I'm going to give this a try." You got into our our NEPQ 2.0 training program. That's where you started. Um, okay, so you get into that. Um, what was going on in your mind when you started going through the, the virtual training course? Like I said, it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit strange at first, just making the transition mentally to, it, it felt weird almost like I, I'm going to ask this person that question, you know, it, it felt awkward okay. until I started to realize that I don't think they feel awkward by it <laughs> and, and it works, you know, they're opening up. Yeah. So you started you you started learning connecting questions that, that mm -hmm. took focus off you and put it on them. Now, before when you would get on a call, before you learned NEPQ, tell us specifically what you would say before. Take us back down memory lane. Well, before you you just I was all in home appointments, you know. So you would go in and you would give them benefits and you ask them which one that they like. And then you would go right into it, into the presentation, pretty much. And then they would do what? And then at the end, you just say, so who's got the better credit? Okay. And they would say what? Uh, sometimes they would say yes. And, other, oh, I don't know. You know, we got to think about this. Yeah. So you got a lot of objections, right? That's why you're only making five, six, seven grand a month. Okay. So now that you're you're starting to learn any PQ. Because you're just in 2.0. You're not even in our advanced stuff, which your income will probably, I would say, could almost double from what you're at now. Okay. So while you're learning this, connecting questions, what, what's one good connecting question that you've learned that you're now applying that triggers them to want to engage? Give us an example. Well, I mean, at the beginning, when I first go in, I basically get into it. And then I first ask them, um, you know, how, how long they've been in their home. Yeah. And then when they say, I say, you know, how, how long you've been with this utility, you know, like 10 years now. I mean, yeah. do you like being with that utility? Okay. So you're, that's, you're into problem awareness now with that yeah. question. For sure. Uh, what, how are you, can, so, okay. So you're going into their home. So uh, typically, you know, cause we train a lot, we train a lot of solar salespeople as well. We train solar I'm, salespeople. I'm virtual well. now. So it's all, all virtual. That was before. Yeah. So what I'm saying is we train salespeople yeah. in your space as well that go door to door and also that take inbound appointments on zoom and also ones that go out to the home. It just kind of all over the place. So are you asking connecting questions or are you just kind of going right into situation question? So at first I just ask them how long they've been in their home, what their utility they're using is, um, how, how long they've been with them. And those um, are your situation ask. questions, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you get, okay. So you ask them a problem awareness question. Okay. So, uh, let's say that they're with Nevada energy or whatever. I don't, uh, sir, you're in Utah. I don't know who the Utah power company is there. What, what's the Utah power company? I can't remember. It's Rocky mountain power in Utah. Okay. Rocky yeah. mountain. Okay. So you're saying, so you've been with this, so you've been Rocky with Rocky mountain for the past 10 years. Do you, do you like using Rocky mountain? Is that what you're asking? Like some problem mm -hmm. or something like that? Okay. Yep. And they're either going to say, well, you know, what do they typically say to that? Uh, typically they'll say, yeah, they're not bad. I mean, I've had no issues with them. Okay. And anything. you do what? Uh, I say, um, so, I mean, it sounds like things are going pretty good with Rocky Mountain Power. Um, you know, is there anything you would change about them if you could? And they say? Yeah, they'll say, well, I mean, I have some outages and, you know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm paying rate increases, you know, and, and I say, and then after that, I'd say, you know, has that, what impact has that had on you? Okay, so and here's what I would show you how to do as well. Okay, so hold, hold on. When you say rate increases, what type of increasing, what type of increase increases are you seeing? Because you want to have them relive that pain, right? Oh, because and because I don't know, like in your state, how much of those rate increases been going up since everything's been going on in the last year? Right. No, I'm asking you. Uh, about four percent. Yeah, because typically on average nationwide. Utility rates usually go up four to five percent on average every year. 
year after yeah. year after year. It's not like they just stay the same. And then 10 years later, they go up by 3%. It's typically four to 5% every year, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, so basically, um, and, and one good thing that we've even taught door-to-door salespeople that sell exactly what you're doing, because it's a little bit different when you're obviously knocking on the doors compared to coming into the home, because you're, you're pretty much cold calling, is, you know, we're asking them, so, uh, you know, and, and there's, there's kind of a door approach that you do before, and I'm not going to get into that right now, but typically you knock on the door, right? And they're like, hey, you know, and you, you've got your like notepad here, like you're, you're almost like a meter reader, like you've got like this, you know, little <laughs> ten. You know what I'm talking about, like the clipboard, because mm-hmm. right? mm-hmm. you're looking around. Because I, you know, the first industry I sold in was door to door alarm sales, right? So that's you know, we teach a lot of people in door to door. Obviously, B two B as well, B two C. It doesn't really matter. Kind of all different industries, but with door to door, a lot is going on in the prospect's mind from the very time they open that door. Okay, it's a little bit different than you just going to the home. All right. So I want to share this with everybody on here that might do door to door as well. So you're standing to the side and you kind of you have to act confused like you're looking at the roof, something like that. You can't just sit here like this, like, hello, my name is Jerry. How's it going? You can't do that. They're just going to slam the door on you pretty quick. So you knock on the door and they come like, hey, how can I help you? Yeah. Are you guys the um, are you guys the uh, the the homeowner here? Like you're confused. And you know what people do? You know what people do with people who are confused? Like you're the old man walking into the gas station. You're confused. You don't know where you're going. What do they do? They want to help. They want to help. So they're like, uh, uh, yeah, we're the homeowners. What's this all about? And you say, oh, yeah, it's not it's not that big. Video. I, I'm just Jeremy. I, I apologize. I, I can't stay long. I've got an appointment over here on the next street over. Uh, but, but I stopped by uh, to see if you could possibly um, help me out for a moment. Uh, sure. H- how can we help you? What, what's going on? Well, I'm not sure if you speak with your uh, neighbors or know what's going on or not, but uh, here it, it might actually be easier if I show you and you bring your little iPad there because a lot of solar guys carry iPads. OK, it might be easier if I actually show you um, this is your house here and they'll be like, they'll look at it. This is your house here. Um, and you're going to kind of turn to the side an angle and you're going to show them the map of like existing customers. This is your house here. And these are all of your neighbors. And they they all get their electricity from us, not um, Rocky Mountain power. Uh, we're not like selling solar panels. If that made sense, I'm sure you'd probably already have those installed. Uh, but they they all buy their electricity from from us uh, rather than Rocky Mountain. Actually, hold on. I, I've got this sales structure written for somebody and I wanted to kind of go through this word for word. So we say, yeah, these are your neighbors right here and they all get their electricity from us, not XYZ power. We're not actually selling solar panels. If that made sense, you probably already have them. But the reason why we're out here is we're just competing with Rocky Mountain. Like, can I ask what the main reason was that you chose them to be your electric provider? And they're going to say, well, we didn't have a choice. Right. Because aren't they the only choice in that state? I'm assuming. I don't know. Most states. Are usually- For the most part. OK, yeah. well, we didn't have a choice. And then you say, so are you opposed to homeowners having a choice? Now, when you say, are you opposed psychologically, people are going to be like, no, I'm not opposed. Or they're going to say, no, of course not. And then you're going to say, well, how it works. Uh, and, and just so you know. I don't know enough about the home and your situation or what you're paying now in utilities to know if we could even help you. But instead of you like buying like a $30,000 solar system, we just have you purchase the electricity the panels produce. And that electricity costs far less than if you were having to buy it from the power lines through Rocky Mountain. Now, I should probably ask, how long have you actually lived in the home using Rocky Mountain, though? And you go right into your first situation question. Do you see how that works, how that kind of smooths, glides in there? Any questions on that? Pretty good. You probably never make heard me of want to go do. Make me want to go do door door now. Yeah, we have a lot of that training in our NEPQ 3.4. <laughs> okay. No, I'll never go right. back to door to door. Now, let's go into this a little bit more. All right. So uh, problem awareness question. So, so typically at that point, they'll say, obviously, we don't have a choice. OK, but you so you've been with Rocky Mountain the last five years. Do you do you like using them? 
Okay. Now, sometimes they're like, yeah, they're not bad. But a lot of times they'll be like, like you said, they'll be like, well, and if they're, if they say, yeah, not bad, you're going to your true, two truths question, which you kind of did. I'll show you to do that a little bit better, maybe. Okay. Just make it more specific. But a lot of times they'll be like, well, we're paying a lot or we had some outage or something, you know, the rates have been going up, blah, blah, blah. blah. And that's where you want to clarify and probe off of their answers like you were just doing to bring out more pain. Okay. Now, when you learned how to clarify and probe that NPQ process from 2.0, what did you notice your prospects started doing? Uh, they just they just start to open up more. In what way? Uh, more more in in a deeper way, I guess you could say. Yeah. Okay. And when they open maybe, up, maybe not maybe not just the surface stuff, but yeah, because like, what happens if your prospect stays surface level with you? At the end of that conversation or conversations when you're trying to close them, what do they typically say? I think about it. I need to think it over. We need to keep looking around. Now's not a good time. See, when your prospects stay surface level with you because you haven't learned the right questions that work with human behavior to get them to open up and go below the surface, they never really tell you what their real problems are. They never feel any pain. There's no gap from where they are compared to where they want to be. The gap can only be created by what? Your questioning skills that allow them to see how big of a problem they really have. And most people, when you first start talking to them, especially with what you sell, don't really realize they have that bad of a problem, right? Or maybe they don't understand how bad the problem is or what the consequences are if they don't do anything about solving the problem which in your case would be they'd be paying their utilities for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and way more. And way more. And it's yeah. like renting a home. <clears throat> Instead of buying a home where they could have the your their this cost, I'm assuming of what you sell, I think it's paid off after 20 or 25 years, right? Where they don't mm. even pay the bill. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They pay minimum. It's like buying a home. Are you going to yeah. buy a home and have it paid off in 25 years where you never have to make a payment? Or are you just going to keep renting the home for the next 50 years? That's the same thing with utilities. Do you yeah. want to buy the utilities and have them paid off? And so when you're older and on a limited income, you don't have that bill, which let's say over the next 25 years, if it goes up by four or 5% per year, and I'm not really good at math, that's four to 5% year. How much are you paying now? Uh, uh, oh, about $400 a month. Okay, if it's, it goes up 5% a year, times 25 years. Okay. So that's going to be about, uh, that's about uh, $1,200 a year by the time you're 65. So if you're on a limited income, how would you be able to pay $1,200 $1, a month for utilities? See, there's little things that you can do there that get them to realize like, oh my gosh, I've got to buy it now and pay it off. So I don't have to pay it when I'm on a limited income and retired, but you learn something new there. Yeah, I use the limited income thing a lot. Do you tell us how you do it? No, no I just I have a I actually have a graph in my presentation, and I show them. I have it all like what you did. I have it all there. Even they better. Can see and I, okay. I, so it's visual, and I have the numbers pop in on my presentation, like the rises. This is what your payments going to be in five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. And or you I can, just, or you can. Or you can just per get the electricity through us. Your payment will always be this because I don't think you guys increase it, right? It just stays the same. Is that how it, it works? It stays the same, yeah. So, so I'll ask them, like, when you guys, I mean, can you guys go forward? I know you guys are almost retired in a couple of years or you are retired. Um, how do you think that's going to affect you when you're paying like this amount in 15 years versus, you know, and this is, this is uh, conservative, right? Like you said, it's going to go up even faster, probably. So let's say, it could, you know, how's that going to affect you when you're when you're everything else is rising and you know that income is going getting less and less over time. So, yeah, and I would even ask him, how will you be able to pay that once you retire and you're on a limited income in 15 years when the bill is this compared to now? Like, how would you be able to pay it? See, that's it. They didn't realize that like, oh, S-H-I-T, we won't be able to pay it. <laughs> See what I mean by yeah. that? Okay. How are you going to afford that? Yeah. How are you going to be able to pay that in 15 years when you retire and your, and your income goes down by 75%, 
yet your bill is three times the amount. What would happen then? See, it's like you're asking a consequence question right there. You see mm -hmm. what I'm at? Okay, give us an example of like a solution awareness question. So you get in there. They obviously, because of your question skills, you're learning from any, the NEPQ virtual training course with the 2.0 product. You're getting them to see how bad their problem really is. So they didn't even know they had before you walked into their house because they don't really think about it that much. Okay. It's like utilities is just like something they just pay because they didn't think they had another choice. Right. And so how do you get them to see what their future is going to look like once these newfound problems are actually solved? What's a good solution awareness question we've taught you that you're now applying? So I obviously have a lot to learn. Like that's, what's the most exciting part is, you know, yeah, once I get into, level, I'm, I'm just in the beginner course. and what I've, what I've done with the beginner is like amazing, you know? Sure. So once I can move on, but, um, I, I kind of work it in my presentation. So I have, I have visuals cause it's virtual and I, I work those in as I'm going through like the rate increase slides. Um, I'm showing them a cost of doing nothing slide and I'm working those numbers with them. So I've, I have my questions built in, in the presentation where I stop and ask. Give me an example of a question for everybody. So in, in, um, so getting them to see the future, you say, yeah, yeah. get them to see what their future is going to look like once these problems are solved, like a solution awareness question. So I don't know if I have a specific one like that, honestly, you probably Maybe you give me a good one. You'd be making another 20 grand a month if you did. Probably, you know, like I said, it's, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've went through this and changed it so many times too. You know, I'm, I, I, Picking up your free videos and stuff too. I, I know you're trying to piecemeal it together. You should just get into 3.0 where it's right there tomorrow. Okay. So let, let's say that we were able to come in. We're able to lower your rates permanently where you're saving around. I think we had looked, it's going to be around $23,000 over the next 20 years. You've been able to keep that money rather than giving it to Rocky Mountain. What would that do for you personally? So I do have one. I say, okay. suppose this ended up working out for you guys, kind of like so many other people I've helped and we're kind of able to permanently lower that electric bill, save you say 15,000 over the next 10, 15 years. What do you think that would do for you guys personally? Yeah. And here's another way to reword that a little bit better. Let's, let's say that we're able to come in we're able to reduce your rate down because typically like what's the average bill in Utah utilities? Um, it is probably a hundred and something is the average. Utah is pretty low rate. Let's say 150 a month. Yeah, so probably what is the average bill with you guys if they switch over for 25 years? No, it's probably dropping at least 20%. Okay. So let's say instead of paying a hundred or 150, they're going to pay a hundred. Okay, so let's say that we, you know, we come in, we're able to take your bill from 150 down to 100, like we do with other clients, which you're only saving like, you know, 50, 60 dollars a month. That's only like 700 dollars a year. That's not a huge amount of money. But besides you just saving the seven, eight hundred bucks a year times 20 years, what is that? Sixteen thousand dollars. Besides you just saving that money, how do you see this benefiting you the most? That's another problem. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Then you can also say, and, and then you can also wrap in there with solution awareness question. You can also say something like this. You can say, you can ask this question now that I'm, I'm this is coming to mind. Um, yeah, I, I believe we put this in the 3.0, uh, but you'll also, um, you'll be like, yeah, it's just, you, you know, it's just like, you know, the home you bought. What was the main reason why you bought the home rather than just not renting a home for the next 40 years? Well, we wanted to have owner ownership. We didn't want to have to have a payment, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And that's the question. That's exactly why people come to us wanting to pay less now for the utilities. But who cares about saving $60 a month? That's only $700, $800 a year. I mean, you times that by 20 years. Yeah, that adds up. That's $16,000. But who cares about that? But the reason why people come to us is because after 25 years, they don't have a bill anymore. 
So when your neighbors are still paying your utility bills 25 years from now that have gone up by 5% every year. So now instead of paying 150, they're paying about 650. You won't have a bill. You not having that bill and you're on a limited income. How do you see that benefiting you the most at that point in your life? See, there's a different way you can ask that. Because okay. mm-hmm. it's it's like, you know, do you, and if, if they have some type of an objection at the end, you can say, well, you know, it just depends on, you know, what you feel is, is more risky. Is it more risky to get involved now and drop your bill automatically by 20% and then in 25 years, you don't have a bill anymore when you've retired and you're on a limited income. So you keep that money. Or is it more risky for you to keep paying Rocky Mountain every single month? Your bill keeps going up 5% every single month for the next 25 years. And then you retire and have a very limited income. You have to pay even more than you are now, which is more risky. See, that's yeah. a I, I, I have a question kind of like that mm-hmm. at the end. Similar. Give it to me. What is it? I just say um, some something similar to that, like, if you guys look at this, we've, we've looked at both options, I guess, which way do you think is going to cost you more or is more risky, like getting started now and saving money and, you know, getting the ball rolling or would, you know, paying the utilities cost you more? Yeah. And I'd even be more specific that like, is it more risky to get solar now? You save automatically around 20%. And in 25 years, you have no bill at all. So you'll keep that money. Like when you're on a limited income retired, you won't have to pay that anymore. Your home will be paid off and your utilities are paid off. You'll never have any bill with your home. Or is it more risky for you guys to do nothing at all? Keep paying Rocky Mountain. Your rates keep going up, conservatively speaking, 5% every single year for 25 years. And now when you retire in 25 years, your bill is going to be $650 a month and you don't have the income to even pay it. Which is more so that works pretty good with younger people, but I deal with a lot of older ones around retired 50s. So they're like, I'm going to be dead in 25 years. <laughs> well, so, are you? Are but, you but then dead? they're still they're still locking that in, you know. So let's locking. say they're let's say they're 50 years old or, or 55. Well, it just depends. You might be dead when you're 75 or 80, but let's pretend that the good Lord keeps you here until you're 83 or 85, and let's say. Your rates have gone up 5% conservatively every single year. And now instead of paying $150, you're now having to pay about $650 per month. And you're 83 years old and on a limited income. How would you then be able to pay all that money without the income to pay it? Mm -hmm. See, that gets them thinking. Now, if they're already 85, it's a little bit different. But even (laughs) if they're 60 and they're 85, who's to say that they're not going to live to 85? I mean, yeah. the average person dies when they're 79, but with the medicine, the way it's going, those rates are going up every year. Mm-hmm. So what happens if you end up living past 80 years old, like a lot of the population is starting to do and you have a limited income and now your rates have gone up 5% every year, which would probably be conservative. And now you're paying on $650 a month, yet you don't have any income to pay it because you're on social security. What would happen then? See, that's a good consequence question. See what I mean? All right. For sure. Uh, All right. What else should we know? What's something big here that everybody should know about NEPQ and getting to the next level that's helped you? Just start, you know, that's the biggest thing. Just take action and start. You know, I started with 2.0, but I was in a terrible financial situation. And, And with solar, it takes a while to get paid. So. I'm just getting paid and I'm going to get into the inner circle. It's my goal here soon. Yeah, because what happens happens to everybody if they don't do anything? Like, where would you be now if you hadn't got into NEPQ four months ago? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, it's like a dream world. I I honestly can't believe um, how good it's how good it is. I mean, it's really is. um, It really does work. I mean, it's crazy. Well, I would hope so by now. We only have like 5,360 some testimonials in the first 28 months. So I don't know, maybe everybody got all the good leads there. I don't know what happened or maybe it's their skill level. They're actually learning how to work with human behavior and they're crushing it with no matter what they sell. 
Uh, Jerry, any last words of advice for anybody on here? I appreciate you being on here today. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I obviously came in the lowest level, so I had to work extra hard, you know? I had to I had to pick through all the free videos and, and write, take 100 page of, of any PQ 2.0 notes and a lot of trial and error. And Yeah, if you, you would know, have been in 3.0, you would have already had all that in like three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went through months of, of just, winging it you know i'm still winging it as you can see but uh, look at the results so hey at least i can't wait to at least you're winging it much better skill level yeah. right going from i seven, can't wait to get in the higher who knows what the possibility is yeah going from six seven eight grand a month to 60 and 70 grand a month consistently in commissions in only about five months of being in the program um we have a lot of people like that for sure in a lot of industries but well done my friend you put in the effort uh you put in the work ethic to once you got into the virtual training to actually go through it and actually apply it, right? Some people might never go through I it. I mean, I, I practiced every day and I, it's just a lot, I put in a lot of work. So it wasn't oh, you know, yeah. free ride even with that. Yeah, wait you till know? you get into inner circle though. If you're making 60 or 70 grand a month in commissions, you get in the inner circle, you'll be well over hundred grand a month pretty consistently for sure. Awesome. So, now, if you want to be like Jerry, you want to learn advanced skills. You want to start making your first 10 grand commission months, 20 grand commission months. And I don't mean when I say make your first 10 or 20 or 30 grand commission months, I don't mean you make 21 month and drop back down to five the next, or you make 18 one month and then you make six next month. I mean, every freaking month and you only keep going up from there. That's what our clients are doing in every industry. Okay. So if you want to get your first 10 grand commission months, your 20 grand commission months, your 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 grand commission months, Message me right now on the Facebook group or on LinkedIn or in my personal Facebook, and I will personally message you back or our CEO, Matt Ryder, or our Chief Revenue Officer, Marco Cortese, and we will give you we will give you some training options so you can make the type of money that Jerry and our clients are making in over 150 industries. It's not just solar. 150 plus industries are trying. I think actually somebody told me in the team it's over 160 now. We have a we have a new client in Berlin that sells seat belts. That's an industry. You have to have seat belts. They had to be sold to car manufacturers. Okay. Go to salesrevolution.pro. You can go to salesrevolution.pro. Salesrevolution.pro. I'll have somebody drop it in there on the team. Salesrevolution.pro. We go live in the group about three to four times a week with different trainings, different Q and A's. Uh, even different stuff that we give out just to help salespeople sell more. Okay. All right, Jerry. Hey, Jeremy. I just yep. want to shout, I'll give a shout out to the company I'm with to soulq.com. They're growing like crazy. So okay. looking for some hey, people. I always ask our clients, because I always know if we've done our job right as a company, do, are you married or single? Married. Okay. Does your spouse like the fact that you got involved in the training? Um, she doesn't know because she doesn't live with me. <laughs> so. Well, she knows you're making more money. Is she happy? I'm, te I'm technically married, yes. <laughs> okay. Is she happy? That's a whole lot. I think she's happy. Okay. Well, if you're yeah. paying for everything and you've got 10 times more money, I hope she's happy with this at this point. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. That's, that's a whole nother subject, man. I appreciate you. I it know I've, I've gone through <laughs> that before. I know what you're going through, my man. All right. Love you, dude. Jerry, you're the man. You're the legend. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody, for being on here. You want to learn those type of skills that Jerry and our clients are losing. Th thousands of our clients are learning. Just post hashtag NEPQ and we'll message you back. Jerry, enjoy Salt Lake City. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.